fan is, that's going to go into the speed fit pipe. Just before people ask, come back up. There you go. Plan for today. Because you see little ideas and you think, oh, I'm going to try that. It skims off any protein build up on the top of the pond. Just because you hear something from somebody doesn't mean that that's the way to do things. There's some overhanging ones as well. They, they're a lot better, I think. You don't know unless you try. Well, you don't lose your little bits in the yeah. pond. It might not work. It might be something that I'm just showing you in a video and next week I'm taking it all down. So the idea of the rubber, I, I just want to make sure peace of mind is heating a pond, covering a pond. Should you do it? Shouldn't you do it? Cable ties on it there, pinned up to there. Yeah, winner, winner, chicken dinner. What do you say, Toe? Thank you, mother, for the rabbits. Right, so I've fixed this all in place. Oh, Toby, what a fart! Right then, ladies and gentlemen, we are back for another video today. So today, coming up in this video, we pretty much got a bit of an update going on with how the fish have been doing after treatment. I've also ordered a load of bits and pieces from Amazon, eBay, and uh, it's going to be a bit of a random one, really. I'm not sure what's going to happen. Could be a bit of this, bit of that, but stick around, see what happens. And um, as you saw in those video clips, it's all coming up in this video. I've also got a retreat again later on in the video. I've been dealing with parasites. I've had a few issues lately. The last three videos that I've put out are just up here, up there. So um, flip back if you don't know what's been going on. So always a good sign when the uh, koi are at the window looking for food. As you can see, the water level in the pond has dropped by 25 mil. Reasons for that, obviously the people that follow the channel, you can see I've got two stainless steel showers at the back of the pond they do look absolutely amazing i love them i've got a little plan today to do a little trick with them as well but the reason why i dropped the pond level is because i've had a bit of flicking and flashing going on down to parasites and uh, a couple of the fish just bumped themselves when they flash or flick there's objects in the pond in my pond especially overhanging how the fish can damage himself this one here right in front of us, Nessie as she's called. You can see she's got a little mark on the side of her head. I will get in there and show you that. She just needs to turn round and we'll be able to have a look, but she never likes swimming up against that side. Hurry up and turn round girl, because the viewers want to see what's going on. But while we're here, this one here also, this is the new fish that I've got, named Nugget. This one's got a, some sort of infection there it looks like it's got a bit of white pus coming out of it now. I don't know whether to leave that or not. That fish did come with that. Here we go. Hopefully we'll have a better look here. Come on. Come over here. Come over here. This way. This way. Come back up. There you go. So that's looking very, very good now, to be fair with you. I'm going to leave that alone. Leave it for another week. And I might put a bit more on it. But all the redness completely gone healing up super quick and it just shows there's not any bacteria problems really if there was a bacteria problem i've been told by a few people that 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 just wouldn't heal up it would take ages to heal up only thing i've noticed i don't know if you guys can notice because i've dropped the pond level can you see the reflection that i'm getting down here now so i just have to be a bit careful when i film or try my best to film so i don't get a you know a huge uh ray of sun through there or something just so you guys get blinded but yeah the main reason why that water level's dropped now is because across the back there's a good probably two three inches now where the fish have to come up it's still chance they're going to bang them on on the end of the showers i knew it was always a possibility when i put them in but if the fish are fine and there's no flicking and flashing you know you don't, you don't generally get a problem. I mean, there's always a chance that there could be a problem. I think for now, what I'm going to do is leave it. I've got some rubber. We'll go into the filter shed a minute and just show you what i got planned for today. I love coming in my filter out. So I've been waiting this week while I've been treatment in the pond, which is fluke M. I've just been thinking, right, what am I gonna do the weekend? Getting ready for bits and pieces to do. I did have a few beers last night. Little bit late getting up this morning, like you do. But yeah, so what I got here, I love watching other people's YouTube channels as well. 
because you see little ideas and you think, oh, I'm gonna try that. So what I've done this week is I've ordered myself up a clear tarpaulin sheet. I'll show you what I'm doing with that. And I just wanted a bit of greenery really just to um, brighten things up a little bit. Because what I've been noticing guys, it looks lovely in here, but because all the everything's so dark, you can see the red blinds into the camera, but because everything's so dark in here, when I'm filming at night time, it makes it really hard to get a good clear picture. So I'm just gonna put a bit of greenery up. These are for the showers as well. We're gonna see what they look like. I'll, I'll open it all up in a minute. I've got this part to fit so I can get my water into the shed as well. The shed, I called it a shed, the filter house. Um, and yeah, basically this is an idea for a 395 this cost me off of eBay. So it's a rubber seal. The idea behind that, I've ordered just over two meters. What I'm planning to do is just where the lip of the tray is on the, on the showers. I've got the smallest one that I could find, one mil or whatever it says, one mil. So you open it up sort of thing and stick it on the shower on the bottom tray on the lip just thinking because it's rubber and it's a bit more padded it's not so dense as smacking into that metal it's still not going to be perfect but for time being for that it will do the job because the water levels lowered so much in here and treatments in i haven't been doing anything but if anyone noticed that they get any scum or anything like that on their pond because i fitted an overflow here what i did with the overflow i drilled out two little holes either side and what that does, it just skims off. When you're trickling in all the time, it just skims off any protein build up on the top of the pond and it just gets rid of it straight away. Part of the reason I don't suffer with no foam in the pond, but I've also changed the faceplate on the on the showers as well, back to the original one, just because the water levels dropped and the, the skimmer won't work as well. But what you can see by doing that, the skimmer's slowed down a hell of a lot. There's nowhere near as much pull in this skimmer anymore. It's because I'm not taking it from the very top. This skimmer line here, you can see it trickling in, but it's nowhere near the same pull as what it was with the old skimmer on, but it's still doing the job. Because the treatment went in, I've never used this before. It's always a bit of a myth with any bacteria stuff that you put your pot into your pond. You always think to yourself, does it actually work? Does it do anything? And quite recently I've been watching a few videos on this sort of stuff uh, in the science labs and places like that they've done research on adding bacteria to a, like a tank and they've also done research on not adding bacteria to a tank and seeing what the water quality is like over a period of time when you're starting up a tank or pond or whatever it is but they've been tested on tanks and basically what it comes down to guys what I'm getting at is that there was no difference whatsoever in the in the testing by using a, a bacteria start but i don't know after treatment i've still bought it probably wasted me money i could say yeah it's the best stuff in the world make sure you get on bacteria before you put it to your pond but i don't know it's one of them in it guys just because you hear something from somebody doesn't mean that that's the way to do things but it's what I'm doing because that's what I want to do. But yeah, I think to start with, what we're going to do, this is a bit of an idea as well. It's a bit random. So to start with, what we're going to do is open up these and um, have a little play, see, see what I can come up with. The idea behind it, off of Amazon, I will try and leave a link down in the bottom for you in the description. But what the idea is, same rule applies out here. I have got a bit of greenery over there in the corners. But because everything's so dark in the garden, all being black, it looks brilliant with, you know, the naked eye. Part of the reason why I haven't painted that, might paint that though, I don't know, what do you reckon? Talking of paint, I also need to paint this going up through here because I still haven't done that. I left it to start with because I wanted a bit of a different feature going on, but I did say that one day I might paint that and I might paint the other door, but we'll see how it goes today. But yeah, reason for these, I'm just gonna chuck a couple in the showers they are plastic and it would there's no benefit to it whatsoever ideally it'd be wicked if i could get some natural plants in there i think that's something that i'm going to do eventually just for time being i'm going to put some of these in i think they were seven quid or the wife paid seven quid she does the amazon for me anyway but i've got a few of these to play with so let's crack on and see what it get up to isn't that right yes it is girl yes it is 
So this was $8.99. So I just opened up the pack. You get six little fake plants. But for $8.99, you actually get 12. They give you 12 of them for $8.99. So it's some sort of fern, if you know what I mean. And they, they do need spreading out. But I'm just hoping you can sort of get my idea here with the picture quality that I'm on about. Because of the green so bright, it should really, because I do a lot of my filming on my phone, it should be a little bit better quality. It enhances the rest of the colours. So what I'm thinking is I'm probably going to bunch two together to give it a bit more of a spread. Spread them out a little bit and have a play. A bit like what I've done with that one. And then just sort of ram them in the shower so it's just sort of hanging out, dripping over. Only downside, this one's going to be easy to do. This one's going to be a nightmare. Because the only way across is across there. Because there's no chance I'm fitting up behind the back of the pond anymore. Because I've put on about 20 kilos since I've built this pond. I lost 20 kilos when I was building it mine. So, uh, yeah. Back to me normal fighting weight, if you know what I mean. Happy days. Just before people ask, all I've done, just use a bit of the old black tape on the bottom to hold them together. And then all I'm going to do is sort of put them in. Yeah, so that looks pretty cool, guys. Ain't going to lie. You can see I've put these in here. And then you can see that there's some overhanging ones as well. These were a set of two for 9 dollars I'll be dead honest with you guys. I do prefer the look of the, like, the ferns, but I'm happy with it. The less than 20 quid gives me something different to have a look at and I had a bit of fun. I nearly got absolutely soaked putting that in. I walked across here, put my plank of wood across and then I slipped. My foot went in. I nearly went head first and I saved myself, but that's why it's all wet up through here because I've got a wet foot. But that said, it would have been better if I went for a dunk. 14 degrees would have been pretty cold, wouldn't it? Hey, Case. Who's that? It's Toby home. Did that work? Yep. Did you get, get on all right today, son? Yeah, I got it done. Right, seeing as you got your tools out, boy, I've got a bit of plumbing work to do, seeing as you just passed your plumbing course. Come on, son. Come and sort me out. All right, then. <laughs> right, so I'm, he knows what he's doing. He wants to crack on. He's like, Dad, I don't mind helping you out. Isn't that right, son? So yeah, that's right. get out there, boy. And um, basically, I need to hook up the blue water pipe out there, boy. And then you run through people. How are you going to do it? And what are you going to do? Well, first, I'm going to turn off the water, which is on an isolation valve. So I'll just turn off the flat blade. Run the water. Obviously, undo his hose. Run the water. Yeah. Let the water come down. Undo the nut on the tap there. You're going to move this tap for me around the back as well, yeah? yeah? Yeah, I'm going to undo the nut, I'm going to pull the pipe out then, cut it where you want it, and then unscrew the Hey, toe, unscrew the tap toe, 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 toe. Easy. Right, easy listen, tap. too much yibbity yabbada, clock, clock, time's ticking, I know how much you plumbers charge per hour, but you ain't charging me because I'm your dad! No crack on, boy! Yeah. Yeah, that's off. Yeah. I'm going to hoof over here. Isn't that right, little ones? Yes, baby. Right, so, what the plan is, down the back down here, we're gonna basically hook up that pipe into there. So, uh, I'm gonna let him crack on, explain what he's doing, when he's doing it, but what he's gonna do, he's gonna move this back for me and just put that round the corner here, just so it's out of sight, out of mind, and um, be a tidier job, wouldn't it, boy? Yep. Ideal. So you got a plan then, son? Yep. Ideal. I'll put your connections there, what I got. Okay. Needed. That's how we're converting it. And what have you got there going on? I've got a T and I've got an isolation valve. That's the advantage of you doing this, Tobe. You can actually fit in this little gap quite easy. Yeah. Uh, can I get an impact drill, please? The what? Impact. I ain't your, I ain't your slave, son, because you're doing work for me. Yeah, <laughs> Right, I'll go back in and get his impact then. You know what I would have done, Toe, if I was doing the job? Yeah, I would have took yeah. all the tools that I needed in one hit. To be fair, I didn't realise um, there was a bracket right there. Make that fit, right? You want that, yeah? Yeah, I want that one. Smooth a bit on the end, though, please. I bet you lose that screw. <laughs> 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 say that I probably will yeah so I just, I just want to remove that so I'll remove that yeah so, so really just know. run through what you're doing to people real quickly 
basically we've got the 20 mil blue pipe here. Yeah. What I'm going to do, that fins on the side. Well, I'm going to put, I'm going to cut this bit of copper down. Yeah. With my 50 mil pipe size. The plan is to get the isolation valve on there. Yeah. Cut this white, cut this 15 mil speed fit pipe down. Yeah. Put an insert in, so we can turn, we can turn off the water. Yeah. Up here before it gets to the 20 mil pipe. Right on. So it's going to look like that, or down like that. And obviously that's going to go down. Cool. The Crack on then. Thing. We'll have a look when you've done some. Well done. I like the idea. Proper job. Look at all this cement I've got on the conservatory. <laughs> I know. Mum don't see that bit. We keep the blinds. Don't tell her. Don't tell her. Always check to make sure you've got an olive in. Always check to make sure you've got an olive in, I've been told. Won't leak though, will it? <laughs> Need some better grips, boy, doesn't he? Yeah, I'm gonna get the big ones in a minute. Do it until it bites. Do it until it bites. I'll turn it off for a minute so we can test it. Watch me fish. Don't spook me fish. <laughs> Don't spook me koi. I'll have all of the fans on you, else, alright? Alright, alright. So the plan is that's going to go into the speed fit pipe. Yeah. In like that. That's going to go into the other side. Yeah. And then the blue pipe's going to go into the bottom fitting, straight into the white pipe between these two. Excellent. Cr cracking, boy. Cracking. And then get some lagging on it, won't he? Loves a bit of lagging, doesn't he? I like a bit of lagging. lagging. Watch you don't lose your little bits in the pond. Inside, can't lose the inside. Got lube up, see? Goes in easier then. That's that's what I like, boy. I like the sound of that. Get the lube out and it slides right in. Got your olive on? Yeah, basically I'm putting an insert in because when you Tighten up this bolt, the olive crushes the pipe. If right. it's normal plastic, it will just break the pipe. Right These out. are pretty pretty hard. Hard plastic. Bit of support like. Well done, son. Get your grips. Quite nice letting the boy do a bit of work for me actually. How much you how much would you charge for a job like this, Tobe? Uh, fifty quid an hour, right? Fifty quid an hour? Tell you what. I need a new job, I think. So, he's got it all looked up. Lovely jubbly. Top job there, boy. Like that. You'll pin that back now. Yeah. Here's the scissors you said you asked for to trim around your pipe or the installation. Do you want me to leave that so we can see that? Or do you want me to cover the isolation? Cover it and we can yeah. get it back off. Better to be all covered. Putting the bracket back on. Water's on, so I'm just going to check my father's pipe work. Make sure he's up the standards. What do you think of my job I did? It looks neat, actually. It's very nice. You was going to do it all, weren't you, boy? But I got a bit... You got a bit? You just wanted carried to get away, on. yeah. I wanted to get on. Like that. There's no leaks on that. So, here we go. Oh, Toby, what a fart! Jesus Christ, Toad! That's a lot of air. Happy day, son, look, we got water. Right, so if you um, turn that one full open, we'll just check this isolation valve over here. Because the idea... Yeah, make sure the high speed valve works. Yours off, yeah? Yeah. Right, so the idea of me having this in place is that if that's wide open, I can regulate the flow of what comes in. I know I can with a tap, but the pressure of water. And if anything goes wrong from there to here, you can turn it off, can't you? Yeah, and we can um, fit that T when you do the rest of the job. Yeah. Explain, turn, turn that one all the way off, and then I'll explain to the viewers what the idea is. So at the moment, for time being, what we're gonna do is just whack a hose pipe from here straight to there but what i want you to do and keep your eye out for when you're on little jobs any off cut bits of pipe look at the size of that toe i just seen he look at he boy 
But yeah, going back to this, what, what he needs to do is we're gonna get a T piece in there with the blue pipe, run it across here, run it across here, and then come up. And then what we're gonna do is put all of these fittings, what I've got there, We'll work out what we need because I don't know really what we need to do it. But I wanted the idea I want to get rid of all of the hose pipes and have solid pipe to everything. Yeah. So that's your next job. But that can be done. That can be done. Range. Proper job. I like the idea of that, mate. Thank you very much. No winner winner chicken dinner. What do you say, Toe? Thank you, mother for the rabbits. Happy Come day. On. Right, so moving on, you're probably thinking, what have I got this for? What what am I gonna do with it? Well, probably one of the biggest debates on koi keeping or fish keeping especially koi is heating a pond covering a pond should you do it shouldn't you do it well that's down to each individual koi hobbyist me personally i don't really cover the pond over winter if i was planning to heat it obviously to save on heating bills and to keep the keep the water temperature stable yeah i would probably cover the pond um but I like seeing my fish all year round, so you can. There's benefits for both sides of the story. I don't really get involved in it. It's down to each individual what you want to do. You don't have to heat a pond. You don't have to cover a pond. And that said, I just wanted to really run you through a little idea I got. So the only idea of what I'm about to say is more really to keep a little bit of the wind chill off during the winter time. If we get a super cold night. I'm a bit stuck and restricted of how to cover the back of the pond if I'm going to cover it. And I don't want to cover over the top with polycarbonate sheets because as my theory of it is that the water's not gassing off as well. Um, well, there's, I ain't even giving my reasons of it. I just like seeing my fish all year round. So, you know, that said, but what I am going to do, I'll spin the camera around and explain. It might not work. It might be something that I'm just showing you in a video and next week I'm taking it all down. It's only the matter of a few pins going into the uh, into the woodwork. Let me explain what I was thinking. You know what I mean? Right, so there's the top. I'm gonna to take it out and make sure it's the right size for the, what I've ordered. So when I built this pond, I had an idea that I was gonna put like a roller blind up here, which is why I never filled in this bit of panel. I never filled this in. The idea was to put a roller bar from there to the end and then what I could do is put it on shutters so I could lift it up, lift it down. I come across with a few ideas since I've had it in place, but I don't know whether to now with the roller bar, what I was planning, I don't know whether just to put it up, see what it's like, see what it fits like to start with before I get too much involved in it. I might just pin it up to start with, but there's a few ideas that I'm thinking I could attach the eyelets into here and then work it all the way across into the face of it. But I think what I'm gonna do is go underneath. And the, the only reason why I'm doing this is just to keep that little bit of wind chill off. And if it does work, the next step really is to get get one for behind the back because I haven't really got any, any way of covering the back, apart from obviously the fence takes a hell of a lot of wind chill off. But I wanna keep this front bit open just so I can see the fish all the time. And it's probably very minute benefit by me putting this front on, but I'm thinking it will help a little bit. And yeah, coming to winter time, I'm putting it up, see what it's all about. And uh, like I said, it might, it might work. It might be something that I might just take straight back down. I don't know, we'll just get it out and I'll just have a little play because I saw another YouTuber doing it and the temperatures that she showed was definitely working. So I'm gonna give it a go. It might work, it might not. And for, I think this was 18 quid. It's a lot cheaper than buying polycarbonate sheet to start with. And we'll just have a play and see what happens. You don't know until you try it yourself. As another YouTuber says, every day is a school day. Just wanted to add in a video before we uh, chuck this tarp up as well. I've recently deleted the Facebook account that I had for James the Koi Whisperer. The account got hacked. I've redone the password and I just have, I've had nothing but problems with it on the Facebook, messaging, stuff stuff not working, people that sending me messages, I'm not getting it. So I just decided to delete it. I deleted my profile as well, um, my normal Facebook that is. I weren't liking the Facebook account, so if you wanted to follow me somewhere else, where you can do that is on Instagram. And what I do with the Instagram account, I just put little 
you know sneaky clips of what's coming up because it's easier to edit those than what it is to do a full movie so the only reason that page is going to be there is for little sneaky previews it's been now i've nearly got 2,000 followers there yeah so i wanted to add that in the video as well so anyone tries messaging me on facebook the account's been took down and um yeah let's just crack on well then guys so you know when you get an idea and you put it together and you think i ain't really too sure so to start with typical amazon it says heavy duty tarpaulin sheet but these things are made so cheap these days i think the idea is all right but i don't think this one's gonna last as you can see on here where i've pulled it real tight the threads on it they ain't the best I mean, that started to go already just for how tight I've pulled it. It has got to be super tight. Any wind at all will just absolutely smash this idea up. But I think it will help a little bit, especially when we do get real cold temperatures. It ain't going to do loads, but if we get a real hard winter, how easy it will be for me to click it on click it off one thing i'm going to do is get some better brackets so i've just used the normal picture ones but i had a couple of these stainless steel ones left they they're a lot better i think they hold it secure a bit better what i've done as well i've put it on a on a string like a string line behind all the way up through these have got the stainless steel ones in but the reason behind that didn't quite go to the whole end of the pond either. It's a little bit short, but I wanted it so I could turn the light on and off. But yeah, reason behind the cord is that if I'm out in the garden and I want to do a bit of filming, all I got to do is unbuckle it here, all of the bottom points, unbuckle it here, and just push it up like a big curtain. It will look a little bit untidy up this end of the garden, but I could do that if I wanted to. I don't know if it's going to stay or not. I don't think it's the best idea I've ever had in my head, to be completely honest with you, but it's an idea. And for how cheap it was, less than 20 quid, it was worth a go. Me thinking about it, if I'm going to do it properly, I feel like this is a bit of a half a job. Cheap job, but the main reason is it's an idea to go behind the back of the pond. Have a look from inside. I'm thinking down the back of the pond, that sheet will definitely help a little bit. Inside, you can definitely see it's uh, all pinned in nice from the inside. I was gonna keep this bit open, this bit of the garden, just so I could do a bit of filming. I do like that, that looks pretty cool now, guys, doesn't it? I do like that. Yeah, it might help on and off if I decide to. It'll probably end up ripping more than likely. But it was worth a go. It was, you know, kept me busy for an hour or two. And worst case scenario, if I don't like it and I'm getting rid of it, you can't see none of the screws what I've put in at the top or the brackets. I've literally only screwed one, two, three, four, five. Screwed five in. If I don't like it, I'll unplug them and I'll uh, fill in the holes. You know what I mean? It gets you thinking of other ideas, doesn't it? Until you try it, you don't know. So I'll give it a go. I am thinking the idea would work. I've just done a bit of research because an idea leads to another idea, doesn't it? So I've done a bit of research and there's a company out there that, well, basically they'll, they'll build you this sheet to the exact size that you need, a proper heavy duty one with decent eyelets all the way up through. And what they do is basically they fit down all the way down like a post for instance like that run all the way to the height that you need it you can have it cut and measured to drop in where you want it to go but i don't know how much it would be so it's worth you know checking out but the other options that i've got really is to use perspex sheet make a frame up so i can just put the perspex sheets in and sit them on the pond on a frame Obviously, the window's probably the most place the heat would ever disappear, so you'd have to put some sort of installation in there or something, a bit of foam or whatever I could find to put in there to make any benefit at all. 
but the main reason I want it is just to keep a little bit of wind shear off. So if the if the sheet gets a bit messed up, then it gets a bit messed up. But it's not staying on at the moment. It's still uh, well too early for me to be keeping it on. I'm talking of the months from December, January, February, where it gets real cold and you ain't really doing much with your koi. I'm thinking it might help just a, a little bit. You don't know unless you try. But see what I mean about the green? Definitely helps the camera footage. I think it does anyway. It looks good through the phone. I tell you that much. Yeah, so what I was saying about unbuckling it, just literally just come over, follow it round and unclip it. Then what the idea was really, was to hold the sheet and then just pull it back like a curtain. So I can just roll it up like this down the bottom where it's a bit bigger of a bundle just make something a bit of string to go around to keep it in place when i do want to unfold it i could do it another way right so that curtain was really winding me up there i come up with a bit of a better idea all i've done i've rolled it up nice and neat i've got some little cable ties on it there pinned up to there and yeah it's all tucked in you can't see it at all from back here and if I get a load of weather that's really cold, I can just clip the cable ties. Bang, 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 bang. I've just um, just put some black screws into there, but what I'm gonna do is paint that up, that red bit, so you don't see that as well. And uh, yeah, it's ready to rock and roll then. Yeah, so it's been a week now since I put the fluke M treatment in. It's come on to the exact seventh day now. I was debating whether to put, some people said like, you read comments and speak to other people in the know what they do. Someone advised me, because I've been dealing with fluke, someone advised me to, obviously, I've only, I'd normally only do this once, but they advised me to PP the pond again, neutralize it, and then on the seventh day this is, bang the fluke M treatment straight back in. I don't think I'm gonna use the PP again. I think PP is quite a harsh treatment to be fair. More than likely it'll be all right, but I don't want to take the risk. I've never done it before. They've been under a lot of stress and treatment as it is. It'll probably be completely fine the way they're swimming around and they're acting. They look a lot better today. I'm being a bit overcautious by treating again. I could, might be able to get away of not treating, but I, I just want to make sure peace of mind will treat again. And, and possibly if I still can find anything after this treatment, if I get any problems within the week that I still see in fish moving, flashing. I'm gonna get a, you know, another fish out, scrape it, see if I can see if there's any dead fluke and gill fluke. And if I can see that they're dead, I'm not gonna retreat. And then I'm gonna leave it for a week. And then more than likely what I'm gonna do is um, start adding the beneficial bacteria. And well, you just take each day as it is, don't you? You know what I mean? So the idea of the rubber, basically, we all need to wear more rubbers. I mean, well, I did when I was younger, but that being said, I've got two lovely kids, a fantastic wife, um, getting a bit sidetracked here. Right, so the idea of this rubber, I'm gonna get across to the showers, measure out the exact meter to go on the bottom of that lip all the way across. Only downside, I can't um, unfortunately fit it today because I just put a little strip on, I cut a little bit, I put a little strip on, and even though it's tight, the water pressure gets in behind it, and it sort of bumps it off after five or 10 minutes. So what I'm gonna do, I don't really know how I'm gonna do it, but I'll do one shower at a time on different days when I get some silicone. I'm gonna put a, open this up and put a thin bead of silicone all the way up through, or CT1, whatever I can get, and then I'll turn the shower off, completely dry it. I'll do one at a time because I can run each shower. I'll turn it off for an hour or two. Probably in that less than an hour will be fine. None of the uh, beneficial bacteria will be damaged in that time. And uh, we'll go from there. But I'll order that up now. Things take time to order up and get to the post. It's an idea and I thought I'll try the idea. Yeah, so you don't really want to see me putting some more treatment in the pond in this video. I'm probably going to end the video here, to be fair with you. I've got to go in and have some scram. I've got a banging roast dinner being cooked up. I did want to say at the end of the video, if uh, if any of you guys know a channel called The Bowden Reefer, 
I definitely recommend you, you jump across to his channel. He's got some cracking fish for sale. He is a, a koi hobbyist himself, but he's also now a koi dealer. So he made his dream come true. I might got a little bit in, you know, I got something on order with him. I said, look, load of yibbity yabbada, load of jibbity jabbada. I'm signing out. So on that note, thank your mother for the rabbits. Over and out, and I'll see you on the next one. That's me, James the Koi Whisperer.